in this lecture we are we are talking about some real world cases so around real world real cases how to handle in logistic regressions so okay first in logistic regressions so what we are finding and what is our assumptions in logistic regressions so in uh, logistic regressions if you just remember our first lecture just we are drawing a decision surface this decision surface might be a linear or almost linear this is our assumptions so first um, just write down what is your decision what kind of decision surface here we are designing sorry our decision surface is linear or hyperplane simply in a two dimension we call it at linear three dimension we call it this plane and this in dimension we call this is a hyperplane and our main assumption is that and our main assumption is that data is linearly data our data is linearly separable or it is almost linearly separable linearly separable or it is almost linear okay now now uh, if we just think geometrically what we are doing we have some data points in one side in one side we are taking the positive and in another side we are taking the negative classes and it is our decision surface and just assume this surface is almost the data these two data these two data positive or negative data it is almost almost linearly separable or linearly separable if and uh, there have in in real scenario all the data is perfectly separable it did not happen okay in if in real if there have some data suppose we are write it in white color and suppose another data green color we are write this and these are and these are separable linearly and suppose uh, our one and our class data is appear here and another class data is appear here that we another language we call is an outlier okay if these situations are happening these situations this kind of data is situations this is called almost linearly separable okay just don't be confused if it is linearly means perfectly linearly separable almost means there are some of our data or outlier appear here so this kind of thing is called also almost linearly separable these kind of things are called almost linearly separable or non-linearly separable means what non-linearly separable means uh, our data is uh, separated by as a circle or as a um, uh, or as a hyperplane means uh, parabola or as a ellipse such kind of things these are the non-linear things these are the our non-linear different color these are our non-linear things we get non-linear surface and this is our linear surface okay and the features interpreted and inter now the coming to our features important and interpolate concept features importance and interpretability now 
come to this concept feature importance and interpretability okay so uh, when we are just discuss about features important if our data if our features is not collinear or it is not multi collinear then we see that our features most important features are deciding about our absolute value of wgs if the features are not collinear or simple multi collinear okay then simple we are using query point and easily can find it is a positive class or negative class okay then we can simply find our interpretable so why this class is positive or negative if our features are not multi collinear yes simply collinear and easily we can interpret it from it okay. <clears throat> now the case appears when our data is imbalanced data so as previous here we are we can also use the up sampling or down sampling in this case if we have imbalanced data if we have imbalanced data then as previous here we can also use what we can also use our up sampling or down sampling okay now so these two things happen features importance happen how to handle features important how to handle imbalance data and assumes and all everything is done now come to the main factors outlier factors it is the real cases in every data there have some outliers okay outliers how to handle so because our logistic regressions are less impact because you are just think about our squashing technique why we are using squashing because we have seen that our one outlier just impact our whole model just if you think about these situations our one outlier impact whole model so to avoid this thing we are using the squashing technique and how to use squashing technique because we are using here the gaussian function sorry the uh, sigmoidal function that is our lambda x as we call it. just you think about it lambda x means what lambda x means one plus one by one plus e to the power minus x just we are using this function to avoid this thing so because it is less impact why seems of lambda x okay and uh, one thing also in dtrain from dtrain what we are finding from dtrain we are finding our optimal w star using our dtrain data we are finding up to training the data at after training we are finding our optimal w star and after finding the optimal when we run our model of a query point so first just think about it when we have the outlier suppose our data set is more outlier prone data okay then how to handle these situations first we know that our these data are less important by uh, less impact by sigma s but first what we are doing first we are training using the sigma model function just training training our model and find this w star method w star that is optimal our w then we are finding dot x i using our x i that is all data set independent of all data sets to multiply it with w transpose x i we have multiplied it 
this means what this means simply this is means distance from pi pi means our plane to x axis okay this w star transpose uh, this i means distance from pi to w star this is xi okay now we are remove from and who is our value just find the distances okay first we are training this data using our outlier from data sets using we are finding the w star then we are calculating the distance from our plane using this w star now we are remove this point who is are very far away from our plane so next step is we are removing this point we remove points which are very far away very from pi okay now after removing this from our duden from where we are just we are removing these two these outlier data now our data tends will become w days right okay first we have d train data now using this d train data we are calculating w star the w star we just we are finding the distances from each point to our optimal plane and now we are calculating the calculating the just finding the a far distances pointed from our plane and we are removed this point just just graphically visualize the thing suppose after using this train data after using d train okay d train data just we are using the this color yellow color here so to our yellow color here which data are appear here suppose this kind of data are appear here okay so after just using this yellow data we are using our finding the base plane is pi that is also yellow color denoted so now we are just calculating the distances we are using white color here now we are just calculating the distances from each point to our plane okay now we are just calculating the distance from each point to our plane then to we, we find that our far distances point this is mean what this is mean our outlier Moment means this is this is this is just we are removing these things we are removing from our d train data okay after removing this d train data we are rest of the data we are called here as a d dash train okay after removing these things this 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 okay now this data is our d train okay i think all of you clear about this now after this now we are just finding the d train using d train d dash train now we are finding our final w star okay this is our final solution sometimes we are using this concept to handle our outliers also so first what first uh, we are using our raw data using raw data we are just cal cal calculated the w star and we are calculating the distance from the h point to our optimal optimal plane that is handled by w star then we are finding the far distance from the point then we are finding these points which are far distance from our plane and we are remove this point just simply and the rest of the data we are called the w dash train data and now using this w dash train data we are calculating our final solution that is w here w tilde w star w w tilde star and this one you are calculating it okay 
So this is the outlier, how to handle outlier in logistic migration. This is another process and sometimes it is also important depending on our situations. Let's change the color, I think the red one. Okay. okay. Now let's missing value. How to handle the missing value? So, in previous chapter, we also learned how to handle the missing values, just imputation technique. Here, we are using simple imputation technique. Imputation technique. And uh, how the imputation technique works? It is works similarly. Mean imputations, we are learned. Median imputation. And as well model imputation, model based imputations depending on our model how to impute our data to be a missing value. Sometimes we using the mean value of the corresponding feature vector and use impute this data median sometimes as sometimes depend on our expert knowledge or model depend on our model. Okay, just don't about don't don't worry about this thing. Thanks. This is the same similar as our previous. Day. Now got the multi-class situation, multi-class. Now till now we have learned about our binary classification. Now if we needed a multi-class classifications and how to use the logistic regressions as multi-class situation. Okay. In multi-class situations and maximum, in typically we are using our one versus rest technique. I think all are about know about one versus rest techniques. One versus rest means we are using first two types and using the binary classifications here on here and just then we are using the rest things on the on this we are applying binary applications binary classifications here. So similarly, just processes goes on. This call is called the one buster testing in this any simplicity typically we are using here this technique typically we are using these techniques okay and another extension you just you can if you find the google if you search on google the extension of logistic migration then you can find the others as well so the extensions of this is the extensions Extension of logistic relations are what? So it is one is max entropy models. Just if you interested how to learn the extension of logistic, just just simple find type on Google. Then you then you can easily find the research. Many there are many research paper available on Google. Max entropy models. Next one is the soft map classification models. Next one is the multinomial logistic regression model. So these is these are the extension of the logistic regressions and uh, and we have given that, that these things these soft mass classifications model we are learning when we are learning about the deep learning chapter when we are learning the deep learning chapter then you can see the soft map classification okay Now the question is, 
द सिमिलरिटी मैट्रिक्स आर यूजफुल हेयर और नॉट नाउ कम टू द सिमिलरिटी मैट्रिक्स कॉन्सेप्ट are used for here or not so sim simply similarity matrix at the you are they are have one extension of the logistic regressions that is called kernel logistic regressions you can easily find many many research paper in google just simply type kernel logistic regressions then you can find this is the extensions of logistic regression language this one is called as what kernel based kernel based logistic regression so here in direct in simply primary logistic regressions here we cannot use the similarity matrix concept but in kernel logistic regressions we can easily use the similarity matrix concept here so kernel this concept also we are learning when we are starting the sbn that is support vector machines when we are starting the support vector machine then we can learn the kernel and uh, kernel that of logistic regressions how to using the kerneling concept in logistic regressions when you are using the sbm techniques sbm model to support vector machines okay now the main thing the based on what's worst case of our logistic regression is what now worst and worst case okay what is the best and worst case techniques so first what first of all we are assuming almost our first assumption is that almost linearly separable or linearly separable this is there okay first our data set may be linearly separable or linear or almost linearly separable then we can apply the logistic equation there now the second thing is that low latency requirement if in our model we need a low latency requirement then this model is most most very very useful model okay low latency requirement system this model is very very important Okay. and we are also see how to use, how to handle this uh, low latency requirement in logistic regressions in previous lecture using the l1 regularizers and another another usefulness of this model is what it is a very fast model to train our data very fast model to train our data okay now the question is all are okay we have everything is okay our very low density and we have seen that this is when happening when d is very small but the main thing arises that if d is very large then our low latency also not fulfillment if we want to if for a large data set for a large data set if we want to means dark data set means i want to do if the data is the very in our data set is the uh, in our data set the category of the data means the dimensions of the data is very large then in such situations the re latency requirement also we have to handle we have to think about our hyper parameter training okay so in such situations almost in in maximum cases no we, we are not talking about the all cases in maximum cases we have seen that the chances of the data linearly separable is almost high okay if d is large then in maximum time we are seeing that chances of the data
एक्स्ट्रा इंच नियरली सेपरेबल इज हाई ओके व्हेन दिस इज द फॉर मैक्सिमम केसेस वी हैव सीन इन द इफ द डायमेंशन ऑफ द डाटा इज अवर वेरी हाई वेरी वेरी हाई देन इट इज ऑलमोस्ट लीनियरली मैक्सिमम टाइम इट इज लीनियरली सेपरेबल वी हैव सीन दैट एंड इजीली इफ इट इज linearly separable and data then easily we can handle the latency requirement of our easily we have handled it so we can easily our latency requirement and by using the l1 regularizer okay i think it is clear here we have discussed some cases of the real world case problem so first this is uh, assumption is that almost this is a linear separable or almost linearly separable and the main thing is that here we have handled the outlier in such a way so first we are training the or using the raw data and finding the w and then just we are finding the distances from each data to our plane that are killed by w and then we are removing the very far distances that we have removing those points which are very fast very far distances from our plane then we are building a new training data point that is called d dash train and this using this d dash train we are finding the, our new w star that is called w tilt w tilt star this is the final conditions so in uh, in sometimes using these techniques also we are handling outlier or as well as we know our um, logistic regressions is most of the time is the less impact by outliers because of the squashing technique that is used by lambda expansions